The National Guard is very unique, and Ohio is one of the 54, obviously, of the, the different states and territories of the United States. But we have a threefold mission. We have that, what we call the away game, where we go fight our nation's war, we report to the president, and we represent our nation, and we defend the freedoms that we treasure so much here in the United States. But we also have a role to the citizens of Ohio. Our state mission, we work for the governor, and the governor is our commander in chief. And when something happens in Ohio, and the citizens of Ohio need some support, the governor can call on our National Guard to support them and provide them in whatever their family needs in the way of security and, and safety. We also have a community mission because we are, I like to say there, everybody knows a guardsman. We're everywhere. We're in every church, we're in every PTA, we're in every community. We try to engage with the schools. We do red ribbon campaigns with the children to try to make sure they understand the values of being drug free, and uh, we work in the playgrounds. We just try to make sure the community knows there's a National Guard is there and the National Guard understands their community needs. I am a, a citizen soldier, so I'm a traditional or an M-Day soldier, meaning one week in a month, uh, two weeks a year, and occasional deployment, whether domestic or, or overseas type operations. 2006, I got deployed to Iraq, and I spent a year there plus two months of pre-mobilization pre training, so it was 14 months altogether, and it was right after we got married, so we had like two months together as a married couple before I went. At the time, you know, my daughters were, were, were pretty young, you know, they, they somewhat didn't understand it at first. I, I just looked back and I just heard a random guy talking, and I'm like, I don't know if that's my dad. Then I got super scared, and then, Caitlin turned around and she just started jumping on a guy that I didn't know it was dad. So I then know. I turned around and jumped on him. It took him a couple months to warm up once he got home, but he's fine now. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to do this when I first got home. Yeah, there was no way he'd be sitting on my lap. The, the wonderful thing about the National Guard, I think, is it's a great mix between a civilian and military life, but it is different to all of a sudden go from, you know, civilian life to, to full-time military. When, when I was younger, you know, I used to think, man, this isn't so bad, but the older you get, the more you realize these guys miss time and time out. They miss weddings, they miss vacations, um, and we're just talking about a normal year, not a deployment year, but they're going to be gone for two weeks, and oh, by the way, they don't get to plan that. So. They give up so much, they sacrifice so much. And in the National Guard, we talk about the, the three-legged stool. And that three-legged stool is a stool that has, uh, you know, a leg consisting of a soldier, a leg consisting of our family, and a leg consisting of our employers. And, you know, when one of those stools, one of those legs, are, aren't where they need to be, then that stool doesn't sit you know, uh, appropriately. Nationwide's got a long history of supporting uh, civilian soldiers and the military. Uh, we find it very beneficial as an organization to support the organizations that support the community. We have some employers that are so excited um, to, to hire soldiers, but at the same time, it's not always easy uh, hiring someone who's from the National Guards because they'll be gone, and a lot of times that's uh, not good for your business. Large corporations seem to do you know, okay with that and be able to, you know, shift the manpower. But when you're a, you know, a mom and pop or a local business owner or, or all these different areas, uh, it... This past summer, summer of 2012, uh, Ohio had experienced a, a ratchet heat wave and real big power outage. It was called Operation Guardian Comfort. The governor put us on a mission that we've never done before called Knock and Talk. So what we did is through census data, we isolated those communities that were heavy and elderly folks. And we thought, how do we ensure their welfare? And we were just to go there to check, to knock, to see if they needed anything, you know, food, water, and then also link them up to those local resources, whether it was a Red Cross building, was a local community center that did have power, that did have air. Hurricane Sandy hit on October 29th of 2012, and uh, within a few days after that, the New York National Guard had called out the neighboring states and asked for their support. Ohio's response was to send the 1484th uh, out of Canton, Ohio, uh, which is a 
um, a transportation company. While we were there, we were part of a joint task force and we worked with uh, FEMA, we worked with uh, NYPD, uh, FDNY, but everywhere we went was the Red Cross. And we, uh, the Red Cross, its volunteers and its supplies were an integral part of what we did. The mentality of somebody that volunteers to help others is one of uh, looking beyond themselves. It's not about them, it's about what, they, what talents they have that can help other people in their community, in their world, in their life. And I think that that represents what our Guards member bring, just like your Red Cross volunteers tears bring. It's a sense of duty, it's a sense of, um, of something greater than themselves. And my daughter actually brought me home. I guess she had been working on something from school. And it was a, I guess it was a poem or letter. It said, my dad. And it talks about, you know, her dad is a hero. It just makes me proud to know that he's out there and he's doing that stuff to help our country. And you get to, you know, see him do this stuff. And it's, it's good. It's neat having a purpose. You know what you're doing is uh, you believe is for the betterment of you know those around you for your country and you get you get a great fulfillment from that purpose. It's hard for us to sacrifice but we know that so many other families are sacrificing even more than what we have. I mean he came home to us and um, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, it's a proud tradition. It's one I hope to carry on with my children because to me um, this is the, uh, serving your country is an honor and people thank me a lot and I do, I get thanked a lot, but I always thank them for the, for the chance to serve them because this is, it's an honor to serve. Every day I get a chance to wear this uniform is a blessing and the older I get the more I realize it. The men and women of Ohio's National Guard have proven themselves time and time again to be dependable, hardworking, and ready to take on any challenge. On behalf of all Ohioans, I really want to thank you for your service. I also want to thank the Red Cross for taking the time to recognize the impact Ohio's National Guard has had on improving the lives of Ohioans all over the Buckeye State. Under the leadership of Major General Ashenhurst, I'm confident in saying that we've got the best National Guard unit in the country. I also want to thank the families. I can appreciate how difficult it is when your loved one is away. You make incredible sacrifices that enable your family member to make Ohio a better and a safer place to live or protect our entire nation overseas. We want to thank you for your support. God bless you.